We want you to understand a little bit about genetic screening for infertility patients. There are two major types of genetic disorders to be aware of, structural chromosome disorders and single gene disorders. Structural chromosome disorders occur because of a random rearrangement of chromosomes that carry your genes that result in an abnormal number of chromosomes. One of the more common disorders that people have heard of is Down syndrome, in which there are three instead of the normal two copies of chromosome 21. There are abnormalities of each of the chromosomes that can occur in a pregnancy or embryo, many of which are incompatible with life. So an embryo with this abnormality would often not implant or would be miscarried early on. However, some of these rearrangements of chromosomes can result in the birth of a child with major abnormalities. These disorders are very much female age related and older women are at higher risk but advanced male age does slightly impact the chance of a pregnancy resulting with one of these abnormalities as well. These disorders can be screened for once you are pregnant with blood testing, the newest testing called NIPT, ultrasound testing, a combination of the two, or amniocentesis or CBS. These disorders can also be screened for if you do in vitro fertilization treatment by taking a few cells or biopsy from your embryos and doing genetic testing on those cells, called PGS, pre-implantation genetic screening or diagnosis. The embryos are frozen, and after the results of the biopsy is available, embryos that are chromosomally normal can be implanted. PGS is not 100% accurate, so even if you do PGS, there are errors in the testing that may not identify all abnormalities in your embryos. It is suggested that women age 38 and older and women who have had multiple miscarriages consider doing PGS if they are doing IVF. The second type of genetic disorder that can result in a child being born with a genetic disease is called a single gene disorder. These diseases occur when one or both partners carry a small irregularity or mutation on one of their chromosomes. Some of these disorders are transmitted in a dominant fashion, resulting in 50% of your offspring having the disease even if only one partner is a carrier. These disorders are often seen in the family history and a patient may show signs of the disease themselves. Another group of single gene disorders are recessive disorders and both partners must be carriers to transmit this disease. Usually 25% of the offspring will have the disease. Often there is no family history and the patients do not exhibit any characteristics of the disorder. Because of this silent transmission to offspring, the recessive disorders are very important to screen for. Pre-pregnancy screening for single gene disorders, carrier testing, has gotten much better in recent years and technology is rapidly advancing. Many health insurances cover this screening. Typically, the screening is now done on your saliva or blood for many diseases, often 100 diseases in one test. Newer gene sequencing testing can be done to test for more variants or mutations of a disease that might not have been found in the simpler testing. Gene sequencing is more expensive and in general is recommended most often for patients whose partner has already tested positive for a single gene disorder. If one of the partners does test positive, we recommend you do genetic counseling to understand more about your chances of having a child with the disease. If both partners test positive for the same disorder, IVF with PGD can be used to identify embryos with that specific disorder. Those embryos would not be implanted in your uterus, preventing you from having a baby with that genetic disorder. Non-diseased embryos can be implanted. It's important to understand that we can only screen for single gene disorders with IVF and PGD if we know you are carriers for that specific disorder ahead of time, which is why we recommend doing carrier screening before starting infertility treatment. Know also that genetic screening, both PGS and carrier screening, is not 100% accurate. Screening may not identify every variant of a single gene disorder, and many less common disorders may not even be tested for. Even with PGS, there are errors in testing that could fail to identify a chromosome abnormality. Please consider this information about genetic disorders to better discuss your plans for infertility treatment with your physician.